Okay, I've had a lot of requests recently to see uh, how coasters are made. We do do a workshop on this at uh, Ninny's Napkins Studio in Everett, Ontario, Canada. So if you are local and you'd like to join in on our workshop, you can visit our website, ninniesnapkins.com, and check out our uh, calendar to see when there's some upcoming workshops. We carry these coasters uh, at Nenny's Napkins, both online and in store, and we also have round ceramic coasters. So the first thing we're going to do with this coaster is uh, paint it white. We want a white background behind our napkin, uh, and uh, painting the coaster, we're going to be using the water method of decoupage today, so painting the coaster makes it so that uh, the coaster isn't so absorbent and it doesn't suck all the water out of our napkins. Uh, you can use any kind of acrylic paint, any kind of water-based paint. We uh, carry Country Chic. I don't know, I can't get it to focus here. I don't know why it's not focusing. Okay, uh, we carry Country Chic uh, all-in-one decor paints here at Ninny's. Um, and this one is Simplicity, which is about as white as you can get. And I gave it a bit of a good shake before I started filming. So step one, we are just going to paint the top of these coasters. You can paint just the top if you'd like, or you can do uh, the sides as well, especially if you want to wrap your coaster around the sides. I don't think we're going to do that today, so I am just going to paint the top of my coaster. Uh, I really like these uh, these Stamperia brushes. This is KR37. Uh, we're out of stock right now uh, as of filming, but I just ordered some more and should have them before the end of August. They're really nice, good quality, soft paint brush. They're very good for painting, but uh, they're exceptionally good for the varnishing, which we're going to do later. And I'll explain why when we get to that point. So I'm just going to demonstrate on two coasters here for you today. And I'll probably speed this up a little bit because I'm sure you've all seen somebody paint before. Uh, you don't really need two coats on this because we're just, uh, we're going to be covering the whole coaster with the napkin. Um, so this coat of paint doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to be a nice, bright base uh, to go behind your napkin. Okay, and now, so we don't have to wait too long, we get our uh, handy dandy Ranger heating and an embossing tool, heat it craft tool. Uh, we also carry these at Ninnies. We like these tools because you can probably tell, hopefully you can tell in the video, that uh, they're uh, not very loud, so you can still have a conversation over it. And also they don't produce a whole lot of wind, uh, which is really great for uh, paper crafters. So if you're trying to dry something and you've got a bunch of papers lying around, it's not going to blow them all over the place. And it gets quite warm, so you don't want to hold it really close to your uh, project because it might bubble, but uh, it does really aid in the drying process. And uh, Country Chic is a clay-based paint which dries pretty quickly anyway. There, that's probably fine right there. Okay. So the next step is choosing your napkin. I've already gone ahead and uh, chosen this napkin, which is always one of my favorites. This is called Deborah's Garden, and we carry it both in a uh, cocktail 5 inch and the larger lunch size. Both of these would be great for coasters. You're just uh, going to get a bigger image, obviously, with the lunch napkin. But I'm going to use the cocktail today. The first thing you want to do is separate your top layer off of your napkin. Uh, most good quality napkins, which are printed in Europe, will have a total of three plies. Sometimes if you buy your napkins at the dollar store, you might only have a total of two plies, including your uh, top. 
This is how we, one of the easier ways to separate your napkins. So with a piece of, just a piece of painter's tape. We're gonna set the uh, white part of the napkin aside. You can always use it for cleanup later or uh, you can stamp on it, stencil it, use it for decoupage. Oh, this layer's being a little more stubborn. There we go. Okay. And I put the tape on the wrong side. So yeah, don't forget to uh, put your tape on your white layer of your napkin. Not this one, but that's okay. That didn't come off too badly. So now the next step is, I forgot to get myself some water, but I'll just use this little spray bottle. The next step would be figuring out your placement. And the nice thing is you can see the coaster really well behind the napkin so you can get it kind of lined up to how you want it. You don't have to be exact at this point. Just figure out approximately. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this fine line brush or fine, uh, yeah, I guess it's a fine line brush. This one's also Stamperia and we also carry this. We have lots of these. KR76B slash S. And uh, again, really good quality. We really like this brush. And then we are going to do some water cutting and we're going to try and leave about an inch around the coaster. It's not super important that you have an inch around all four sides, but at least one size side is good and you'll see why later on. And this is uh, regardless of whether you're going to have your napkin overlap down the sides of your coaster or not, we still like to leave this border. So if you've never seen water cutting before, all I'm doing is getting a little bit of water on my fine brush and then I'm painting it on and then just pulling the napkin apart where it's wet. Uh, it's a very effective way. I could cut this with scissors, um, but I like to practice my water cutting whenever I can because if I just wanted, uh, say I just wanted to put a small image in the middle of this coaster, I wasn't going to cover the whole coaster and I wanted to, I had a white background around the image. Feathering the edges like this uh, allows it to really blend in well with your background. If you cut your edges and you have a nice, or you have a straight edge, it's not going to blend in very well. You're always going to see it and it's always just going to look like you just stuck something on there. But if you find uh, using scissors for this to be easier, then go ahead with that. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to set my coaster aside for a second. We're going to get out a sheet of plastic. I get a lot of questions about this plastic. This sheet that I use um, was just one that a bunch of rice papers came in from one of our manufacturers. It's just a flimsy piece of plastic. You could use a sheet protector uh, for, you know, you put pages in for a binder, it's got three hole punches in, or even something like a big freezer bag, a Ziploc bag, you can cut it in half if you like, or I mean this one is, is a bag so it's still got two layers. It's okay as long as it's a nice clear flimsy piece of plastic. So we're going to put that down, and then you place your napkin face side down. Okay, so it's kind of hard to see, but I've got the plastic here. And now we are going to spray this napkin. Uh, any kind of, this is a fine mist bottle, but any kind of spray bottle will work. I've even uh, just poured water on in the past. And I'm going to actually wet my white paintbrush a little bit as well, so it doesn't dry out while I'm filming. And you want to get your napkin good and wet. You don't want any dry spots uh, and it should almost be floating in the water. And then what you want to do, because as you get it wet, it's going to all kind of bunch up in the middle. So you just want to um, lay your finger down as flat as you can on the napkin. The more point of contact you have, the less likely you are to rip it. You don't want to use just your fingertip and pull this way because you will likely rip it. Um, but if you lay your whole finger down like this and then just gently pull out outwards 
uh, just to stop that kind of bunching in the middle. You're not trying to get all the wrinkles out at this stage. You're not trying to get all the bubbles out at this stage. So don't worry about that. You're literally just pulling it outwards. Okay, that looks pretty good. Move that out of the way for a second. Then I'm going to put my coaster back down here. Then what we're going to do, hope you can see that, is we're going to flip this over and your napkin is just going to cling to that sheet because of water. Uh, and then you can kind of hover it over top and see to make sure you've got a good placement. Decide about where you want it. Uh, I'm thinking about maybe here. And then you're going to gently set it down. Now once it's down, this is when we're going to push out all the uh, wrinkles and bubbles and the excess water. So you can use a balled up rag or anything, even your, your sleeve, and just start in the middle and kind of push out outwards. You don't have to be really gentle here because the plastic sheet is protecting your napkin. And you're just pushing all the water and all the bubbles out. Look at that, that already looks beautiful. Okay, then you're going to grab your fine line brush again. And you're going to try and get between this excess napkin here and the plastic. And it's sometimes it's a good idea to have, I have um, like a, a protector on my desk. Sometimes I put another sheet of this under if I don't. It's a good idea to have something that the napkin will cling to because what we're going to do is try and get like this between it and then we're going to try and get this napkin to actually stick down to that surface. Um, just helps it to cling a little bit and helps to separate it from the plastic sheet. We're just trying to get one kind of corner down mostly. So I hope you can see what I'm doing there. And don't worry about, you know, if this part of the napkin rips, this excess part, we're going to sand it all off later. Uh, if you want your napkin to come down the sides of the coaster, you need to be a little bit more careful with this. But because I'm just going to do the surface of the coaster, I don't really care what happens to this part of the napkin. And then you can actually even lay your brush right there on top of part of it to hold hold the uh, napkin down. I know there's a bit of a reflection there but putting a little bit of weight on that napkin and then we're going to start trying to peel this back the plastic sheet back. So you start at the corner and if your napkin is not lifting at all you're not seeing any bubbling you can keep going and it helps to try and keep this uh, this part of the sheet low uh, you don't want it to you know, pull, be pulling it upwards like this because it's likely to lift your napkin up. Um, it's a good idea to try and keep it as low as possible. And then you can just kind of roll it back. And this water method of decoupage, this isn't just for coasters. Really any uh, smooth surface like this. I do it when I make trivets. I do it on uh, tissue boxes. Um, yeah, anything that's got like a flat surface and this is going to give you a very smooth finish on your coasters. So I'm just peeling a little bit of that away and I'm running out of room on my table to slide this. Uh, but anyway, there we go. And that looks pretty good. I see no wrinkles. Now if there was, I could always put this back down and uh, smooth it out again and then start over. Not a big deal. Now, while your napkin is still wet, we're going to varnish it. Uh, you need to be very careful because obviously a wet napkin is very fragile. Uh, what we use here for coasters is Polyvine Heavy Duty Wood Varnish. And we do carry this. Uh, Polyvine varnishes... Uh, this one in particular will protect against heat and moisture. Uh, polyvi polyvine varnishes dry crystal clear. They're non-yellowing. They are uh, ultra low VOCs, I believe, if not low VOCs. Totally safe to use indoors, safe to use around children. You don't need any ventilation. You don't have to go outside. There's very little smell, if any at all. Uh, and it cures in just 16 hours, which is basically unheard of, especially for a heat protecting varnish. 
I know a lot of people use an engine enamel spray, um, which, sure, that's great. It, uh, it gives you a good finish. It works well for coasters, but it's usually generally a 30-day cure time, um, which means, you know, up to 30 days, cups might still stick. The coasters might stick to each other. Uh, and you don't want that, especially if you're giving them as a gift or you're, uh, you do craft fairs and you're going to be selling them at craft fairs. So this cures in just 16 hours. I usually give it 48 to be safe, but 48 is a lot shorter than uh, 30 days. Uh, yeah, we, we love polyvine. It comes from the UK. We import it here to Canada. And as far as I know, we are the only company in Canada who carries polyvine varnishes. We get a lot of use out of them here in the Ninny's Napkins warehouse. So I've got a little bit of white paint in my dish here. But I'm just going to pour a little bit. You don't need a lot. A bottle like this goes a long way. This uh, bottle here that I've got is a 500 milliliter bottle. Comes in 100 milliliters and a liter. And actually I think you can get even bigger sizes than that. But at this time we're not carrying them. Uh, this white paintbrush is getting in my way. So I've got another one of these nice soft Stamperia brushes and this is what I mentioned when we're varnishing this is when it's really uh, when this is a really great brush. So what you want to do is get quite a bit of varnish on your brush because uh, that creates less friction. You know you're almost lose it, using it kind of as a lubricant as you go across and you want to hold your brush very flat and low and you're going to start in the middle and you're barely, I'm not putting any pressure on, I'm just kind of dragging the brush across. And I tend not to go right to the very edges because later we're going to want to take all this excess napkin off and if the varnish leaks over the edges, it's going to stick to the edges. So I try and get as close to the edges as I possibly can without uh, touching right to them. Remember that we're going to put on at least two more coats of this varnish later when the uh, when the coasters are complete so you don't need to get really great coverage on the edges so there I'm just being very gentle if you push too much or you fuss too much with it you're risking ripping it uh, normally I say don't even go back over where you've already done, but I, uh, I've done this many, many times and I, I know that I'm very gentle. So I'm just very gently rubbing that brush over. There! And that's it for now. Now we have to let this varnish dry. Uh, a lot of times I put the plastic, another plastic sheet under it, so now I can move this one out of the way and start working on the next one. Um, but for uh, demonstration purposes, I'm just going to take a pause for now and come back later when this varnish is dry. The first coat, because we did put it on quite thickly and it's soaking through the napkin, the first coat is going to take quite a while to dry, probably a good couple of hours. You can use the heat tool, it still takes quite a bit of time. Your next two coats are going to be quite thin and they're uh, going to dry really quickly. Anyway, I'll be back later. Okay, so now our coasters have had a chance to dry. Uh, as you can see, we've got a lot of excess napkin hanging off here. So now if I was going to wrap the napkin down the sides of my coaster, if I'd painted that white and that was my intention, I would now pull the napkin down like this, make it taut along the side, and now we're going to take a sanding block or a piece of sandpaper, fine grit is usually pretty good, uh, and we're going to drag it across that, the corner, the kind of sharp edge here, and as you can see that will very easily cut your napkin really cleanly. So again this is if I was going to uh, put the napkin down the sides I would do this and then See, mine's not very neat because I didn't, I wasn't uh, trying really hard. But then I would take, if this had varnish on it, I would take it and just fold that down, and the varnish will soak through the napkin and adhere it. Uh, I'm not going to do the side, so I'm actually going to 
use my sanding block and cut the napkin off here. And this is when I was talking about earlier how <clears throat> if you had varnish right to the end and it dripped down, your napkin would be very stuck on the sides. Uh, and even still mine is a little bit. That's okay. I mean we can sand that off. It's just a little more difficult. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to drag that across. You can see it's cutting here really well and here I got a little bit of varnish so uh, might need to use a little bit heavier grit here. Anyway, the napkin is gone. Let me just go all the way around the edges. You can see how easily I'm not putting a lot of pressure on, I'm just dragging this across. Here I even accidentally got a little bit of paint on the side. Same thing. Just gonna sand that right off. There. Now look how beautiful that looks. Oh, again, my camera doesn't want to focus. But uh there, you can see. So now that that's done, I'm going to put two more coats of heavy duty, polyvine heavy duty wood varnish onto the surface of our coasters. Do one now, allow it to dry. Uh, if you're letting it dry naturally, I would wait maybe uh, an hour. Uh, or you can use your uh, dryer or your heat tool to speed up the process. I'm just going to do a nice thin coat. Um, when working with polyvine or probably almost any varnish, a nice soft, flat, um, flat, wide brush will give you the best results um, to avoid brush strokes. You should get a very smooth finish with this. And of course, you can do more than two more coats. Sometimes I do three more coats. And if you like, you can even come right down the edges and varnish the edges as well. Um, and I forgot to mention earlier, this one that I'm using uh, with the red here means it's a satin finish, uh, so it will have a little bit of sheen to it. Uh, the heavy duty wood varnish also comes in a dead flat, which means there will be no sheen at all. It is completely uh, a matte finish or a flat finish. Uh, most polyvine varnishes come in both of those, the dead flat and the satin. Uh, some of them, like the decorator's varnish, also come in a gloss. And with the satin finish, I find the more coats you apply, the uh, glossier it gets. Uh, whereas with the dead flat, it doesn't matter how many coats you apply, it will be completely matte. So, there you have it. There's a coaster. I'll just do, uh, just finish this one up here. And the last thing I'd like to mention is, I mean, these were wood coasters and this is wood varnish, but you certainly don't aren't limited to uh, using this on wood. You can use them on ceramic coasters as well. Um, Really, it's it's a very versatile varnish. There you go. Later when that's dry, I'll put on my final coat or two. We've got two beautiful
coasters.